Hello. I recently added this laser engraver with a 5.5 watt laser module to my shop. This engraver has an Arduino Nano controller running Gerbil firmware. The laser module I purchased supports optical power control using pulse width modulation on the plus and minus TTL inputs. These inputs connect directly to the ground and PWM pins in the laser connector on the Elks Maker MANA SE board. And the G-code S command for spindle speed is used to control the optical power. The connections needed to make this work are the laser input minus pin connects to MANA board ground pin and the laser input plus pin connects to MANA board PWM pin. I started working with this machine using just the firmware and software that came with it and found it rather limiting. So I then set out to find a set of software to meet my needs. In this video, I'll go over my hardware and software setup, followed by an example that will go through the steps I use. First, here is the hardware setup and the operations performed using two computers. The modifications to the laser engraver are an additional support for the cables and air assist hose, that's this board here, and added a, an adjustable air assist nozzle as shown here, and the controller firmware has been updated from uh, modified Gerbil version 0.9x that was shipped with the engraver to Gerbil 1.1e. The shop laptop is a dedicated machine. The main function is to send a G-code file to the laser engraver's controller. It sits in the shop next to the laser engraver and is connected via a USB cable. This machine was an old Windows Vista laptop that I replaced the operating system with Ubuntu 18.04. And it is connected to the house network via Wi-Fi. The desktop computer does dual boot either Ubuntu 18.04 or Windows 7. But the software covered in this video was the Windows version. Although most of the programs do have a Linux and iOS version to them. This slide shows the software I'm currently using on the different machines. All the software shown here is either freeware or free for personal use. Included in this video's description are links to the web pages for all the programs shown here. The update to the laser controller's firmware was performed using a demo version of the T2 laser software. This was done while I was testing T2 laser software, but this update could also be performed using the freeware tools for the Arduino. The shop laptop uses the program Laser uh, GRBL to send a G-code file to the laser controller. This program only has Windows version, but I found that it runs very well using Wine on Ubuntu. I like the program because its GUI allows for user-definable buttons and it has a button that allows you to move the origin X0, Y0 to the current position of the laser. This gives a lot more options when generating G-code for a project. More information about these buttons will be covered later in the video. The FTP server and real VNC server are started on boot. To come up with feed rates and power settings for different operations, I found myself creating and modifying little G-code files. Doing this by hand was very tedious and prone to typos. So I wrote a program, GenCal, that allows me to enter power, feed, and other parameters and generate a G-code file to perform the test. This program is available through GitHub and a link is provided below. It has been tested on both Ubuntu 18.04 and Windows 7 and 8. On the desktop computer, designs are created and saved in SVG files. The LaserWeb 4 program can take SVG files in as input and generates the G-code for the design. If a design uses an image, GIMP is used to manipulate the image before it is imported into Inkscape. An exception is if the image is being clipped in Inkscape, 
uh, WebLaser 4 currently doesn't recognize image clipping in the SVG file. So this must be done first and exported as an image file in Inkscape. Then this clipped image is imported into the design being created in Inkscape. G-code files are transferred to the shop laptop using the FTP client side program FileZilla. And remote control and progress checking of a job on a shop laptop is done using Real VNC Viewer from either the desktop or an iPad. Here is the basic flow of operations. A design is created using Inkscape and GIMP here, which creates an SVG file. Then uh, the power and feed settings are uh, figured out using the GenCal, and those both feed into uh, generating the G-code file in LaserWeb 4. G-code file is then transmitted to the shop laptop using FileZilla, and then the shop laptop sends it to the laser engraver using laser GRBL. The example design is the base of a stand for a wooden shell. The disc has a 3D engraved pattern on it and is cut from a quarter inch piece of poplar. Here in the Inkscape is the design for the base. It consists of uh, two paths and an image. <clears throat> when I hide the image, you can see the two paths easier. The blue path is going to be uh, vector engraved to give the image a very clean edge. And the red path is going to be a laser cut operation. And the image itself will be a rastered uh, engraving. The, this image uh, uh, was pre-processed uh, through Inkscape and GIMP, as I previously described. Next, I need the power and feed settings for the different operations. I'm going to start from settings I used from the first set of bases. I saved them in the material database of LaserWeb 4. Here is the material database, and you can see here's the, the cut. To cut the quarter-inch poplar, it took a minimum of four passes with laser power set to 100%, and the feed or uh, cut rate is set at 200 millimeters a minute. And because I'm using a new piece of poplar, I need to rerun some of the tests to figure out uh, or get a feel for the changes that are going to be needed to these settings. So using a program I wrote called GenCal, I'll start with the settings that I recorded in the LaserWeb 4, and I decided that I would just uh, figure out how to cut and then make, figure out from these changes how I'm going to modify the um, raster engraving and vector engraving operations. My feed setting was uh, rate was to be 200. I'm going to include this. Uh, my laser power is uh, at maximum. The spindle speed is set to 1000. That's the way I set up my uh, GRBL firmware. Uh, the dimension of the box that I want to cut is going to be 5 millimeters by 10 millimeters. And I originally said four passes is what it would take to uh, cut. I then generate the, the code, and it shows in this window, and I, I can go through and look at it through. And then we save it out. I'll, I'll just leave it as test that uh, and see. I'll, I'm going to put it on my desktop here. Going into Laser Gerbil, I, I'll read that file in. And then <clears throat> send that. Um, I'm not currently connected to the machine, to the laser machine, but I would then click on this little arrow button, and then that would run the test for me. When I uh, originally did this, I, I ran it with these settings, and it did not even engrave the wood. So this uh, piece of poplar uh, is much harder than the poplar piece that I had before. So I then uh, re-ran the test by changing uh, the feed rate down to 100. And I think I changed the uh, passes to 8. And again, generate, did a save, and I just saved over the top of the file. And then 
Here I just reload this file back into um, laser gerbil and send it again to the machine and see if that would cut. And here's the results that I got. When I made this first set of changes, the box is drawn here and it didn't go all the way through. So I then changed my number of passes. I doubled it and it still didn't go through. Then I set it to 20 passes and it still didn't go through. So then I decided I took a, a box cutter and you can see I, I've cut away part of the wood so that I could see the depth of which the laser had gotten to just by changing pass numbers. And you can see that it's really not moving much from, from that original test. So then I changed the feed rate down to 50 this is the box that was cut out, and it actually did cut through the quarter-inch uh, poplar. So I decided for this example design, these were going to be the settings that I was going to use. So now I'm ready to go into LaserWeb 4. Let's bring in the design. Okay, here's the design, and what we will do is go find our objects. And I like to start with the image. We'll do the raster first, and here is 3D raster and gray poplar. <clears throat> so I'm going to use that as my template, and then the next, we want the circle, that one there. This circle will be laser engraved. And then the last operation we'll do is the actual cut operation here. Okay, so now we'll modify what I had, what I was, took out of the database. So when I was clicking on this little magic wand, it's, you can see it's going to load from the database. So that's how I picked up the old settings that I'd used before. So I said 20 is the number of passes we want. Our cut rate was 50, per, uh, 50 millimeters per minute and our laser power is set to 100%. So then the sun of, oh, this is wrong, not laser, fill path. This is vector and creep, this one. Okay. So on the vector and grave, I had laser power at 80, and then let's modify this down to 600 on the feed rate. So that should give us a good engraving. And then the last one was rastering. You can see we're doing a grayscale engraving, 3D engraving. So our uh, power is going to go from off of zero to 100% max. The cut rate, we're going to lower this down quite a bit. And it's one pass. And I also like to turn on this diagonal. So this will cut at a diagonal of like 45 degrees um, across the grain. I always kind of uh, set my pieces such that the wood grain is running in the X axis. And then this will um, give a, a nice engraving kind of cross that grain. Now we got our operations all configured in the settings in them. We, I generate the G-code. Um, this does have a simulator built into it. They show you the kind of the, the movement of the laser. 
and you can move it through all its operations with a slider. I then save my T code out. I'm going to cancel this because I've already done this operation. I would transmit it over to the shop laptop using FileZilla. And on my shop laptop, I would then open that file. And now we're set to go. Now, in Laser Gerbil here on the shop laptop, I would, I'm not going to show it here, but I set my piece of wood into the uh, work area of the laser. And then using these buttons here, these navigate buttons, I would move the laser head around to where I want it to be origined. This button here actually sets the origin to help me with this, I created these user-defined buttons. And what I did here, I'll show you, is uh, in this button, I actually turn the laser on, M3, on its lowest setting, uh, spindle speed of uh, S1. And it basically gives me a laser pointer, kind of where, where that position, you can actually visually see the laser on the, the wood. So that's how I position origin. This one is uh, to turn the laser off, is just issues the M5 command. And then this one here, when I read in a project like this, the G code into laser gerbil, it figures out coordinates for the most furthest left position, the bottom position, the furthest right position, the furthest top position. So with these G code command, I can draw a box and you can see um, the area that the laser is going to work in for this G-code file. So usually I would turn on, turn the laser on weak, and then I can hit this button, and it would uh, draw that box, and I could see that I'm positioned correctly on the workpiece. You'd then uh, click this button up here, and it would actually run. And I have a time-lapse video showing uh, the laser running this. Here are the results. So this was the base from the first set of runs that I did. And you can kind of see here that the, the wood actually had um, different tones in the grain. This was a darker side, and then you can see up here that it was lighter. And it actually looks like it um, in the lighter section was a little harder in the wood, but not a lot harder because it's still cut with the same settings. But over here, here's with this new piece of wood poplar that I used. Even though it was able to cut this box out, this uh, cut here did not go all the way through. It's close, but it's it's not all the way through. And you can see here in the raster engraving that it's missing some of the lighter grays here. So I would, um, if I were going to do this again, I would probably go back into my uh, laser web four and regenerate the G code by changing in here in the raster settings, uh, the raster scanning, maybe lowering the cut rate a little bit. And I also think uh, I would probably uh, move the lowest power from zero up to something maybe, you know, like around 8%. And that, that'll help try to shift all of the, the grays up into power settings that uh, We'll do more engraving in, into this wood. But it, as you can see, it's kind of an experimental process. You kind of got to go back and forth. And if I really, if this didn't work, I'd 
may end up having to go back to and do an engraving uh, test. So in this engraving test, you can change the feed rate, and there's these min and max power. This is actual spindle speed numbers rather than a percentage. So my max spindle speed is set up for 1,000 and min power of 100. And what's going to happen here is um, this is going to engrave a bar that will have 255 um, power changes in it here. So you can see there's tick marks that show every power change that was made. The length of the bar and the width of the bar can, is also programmable here by the user so that you can run a test. So you can see here on this piece of wood, I ran three different tests. What I was doing was playing with the feed rates and um, the, that min power number to bring the grayscales so that there were fewer of these grayscales not being engraved at all. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. Please leave me feedback and comments below. Thank you.